I am Dan with Family White TV, and this is my home theater tour. And for those of you who didn't learn how to write in cursive, and for those of you who are right-handed, yes. So let's begin. Of course, here at the entryway, we have the little signage. I mean, you got to have decorations outside your home theater, right? And a little bit more right here. These are little things you can get at Hobby Lobby, stuff like that, to make your theater look a little bit more, I don't know, decor. And so one of the first and most important features of any home theater is, of course, a clothes drying rack. Yes, what you want to do is make sure that you allow your spouse to have a little bit of leeway in your home theater so that you can have marital bliss and all that and compromise and uh, maybe she'll be a little bit more willing to let you spend an extra thousand, two thousand, ten thousand dollars on your home theater. Now, of course, flare is always important and you don't want anyone ever have to talk to you about your flare. So we got some flare items here. This was the hardest puzzle I've ever tried to put together. And we have a guitar that I never play. And a piano that I've attempted to learn a couple times and gave up on. And it's right down here. Yep. 88 keys. Can't play it. And here we are inside the theater proper. So I guess I'll start with uh, the screen. I mean, it's the main star of the theater, right? Nothing says theater like a nice wide cinema soap scope screen. So this is a 2.35 to 1 constant image height screen. Now this screen is adjustable so if I'm watching something in a 16 by 9 format I have these two panels right here. Nothing special just some wood frames covered up with uh, black velvet and I can move these in and now I have a 16 by 9 formatted screen and I can go all the way out to the 2.35 to 1 format or sometimes there's movies that are a little bit somewhere in between so I can even adjust it out there's supposed to be a magnet up in there somewhere. Well, if this sat in here a little bit tighter, it would work a little bit better, warts and all, so. But this screen, and if I can, of course, get a few bit more inches if I go ahead and take these off completely. But this is a 10 foot wide screen, so that equates to some math, I wanna say about 100, huh. Okay, so it is a 130 inch diagonal image. And if I have it closed down in the 16 by 9 mode, it is a 104 inch screen. Now this screen is an acoustically transparent screen and the material itself is basically, it's spandex. It is uh, basically what's called matte milliskin. It's available from Spandex World and several other suppliers. Just do a Google search for matte milliskin spandex and you'll find the kind of spandex material this is. This is two layers of spandex. There's a white layer and then there's a gray layer behind it and then all the speakers are behind the screen. Now up here on the ceiling we have kind of one of the other stars of the home theater, which is my projector. This is a Mitsubishi HG 4000 Full HD projector. Now it's a Full HD, it's not 4K, it's 1920 by 1080. It is, it is a DLP projector and it is an older projector. I got this probably at least uh, five or six years ago. Paid less than 2000 for it. I want to say I paid about $1,400 for it. It was kind of a stopgap measure because I needed a new projector. My old projector was a 720p projector and I wanted to get like an LED projector but uh, they were way overpriced at the time so I just wanted to get something to hold me over until I get the projector that I really want to get in the future. And it's still holding out. It holds its own pretty well but there are some features that I wish it would have like, uh, like lens memory would help me a lot so I don't have to adjust it every time I adjust the screen. Of course, it's not a 4K projector, and it doesn't have as uh, deep of blacks that I would like. The main downside of this projector, and the one reason I really want to upgrade, is because I have to adjust it whenever I want to change content on my screen. Like if I want to go from from widescreen down to 16 by 9, well, I have to zoom the projector in and out manually. I'll show you what that looks like. So let's see. I gotta zoom my projector back in, and then I have this butterfly nut up here that I gotta adjust then I just have to fine-tune it and get it exactly where it's supposed to go adjust the zoom a little bit just so that it's in there just perfectly now speaking of projectors you'll notice that this projector is on a mount and this is not a off-the-shelf mount this is actually a do-it-yourself mount that I kind of hacked together 
Basically, it's two floor flanges from Home Depot connected with a pipe from Home Depot, and it's mounted to the ceiling. Now, of course, it's not just screwed right into the sheetrock of the ceiling, because that's a great way to drop your projector on the ground. But actually what I did was once I knew exactly where this mount was going to go, I went up into the attic and I secured an extra 2x4 up there so that it would be able to easily handle the weight of the projector and I won't make a huge hole in the drywall from the projector just kind of come crashing down because I only use sheetrock screws or something stupid like that. The speakers, which is the other big half of the theater, is uh, I mean, really the audio brains of the theater. So what I have are, uh, I have clips all around except for my subwoofers. The subwoofers are custom built, but my speakers are Klipsch speakers. Now the uh, front tower speakers are Klipsch RF72 speakers. The center channel is RC642, and the surrounds are RS62 twos, and the backs are RB8 twos. Now let me talk a little bit about my front speakers because I do have an acoustically transparent screen here, and some of you may be saying, well, you should have just got three RF72 towers and use that as a center channel. Well, at the time when I actually got the speakers, I did not have an acoustically transparent screen, so I just got the RC64 center channel to match up to the uh, two tower speakers. Now that I have an acoustically transparent screen, yes, it would be more ideal to have just three tower speakers behind the screen and call it a day. But because I move every so often, I might not be in a position where I can have an acoustically transparent screen in the next house, so that center channel may come in handy. But what I have done is I rotated the center channel 90 degrees, and I also rotated the horn in the center channel 90 degrees, and I have a video on that one also. Now the clip speakers that I got are the one thing I really splurged on, and the reason was speakers don't really advance technology-wise. Now, of course, manufacturers will come out with some sort of new speaker every couple of years just to kind of keep the brand fresh, but really, speaker technology does not advance. So I splurged on the speakers, and the speakers I got are honestly the speakers that I hope to keep until the day I die. I mean, unless the house burns down or something like that and I have to buy new speakers or they get stolen or something like that. But, but these speakers are the ones that I plan to keep forever. I don't feel any need to upgrade these speakers. No upgrade bug with that. Very happy with the clips setup that I have. Now my subwoofers are two 18-inch subwoofers which I built myself. They are, if I recall correctly, about 23 cubic feet in volume and they are tuned at 11 hertz. And yes, they will shake the house. <laughs> Now along the side walls, you can see that there are acoustic treatment panels. That's what these uh, black things on the wall are. And basically what this is, I made these while I was in Germany. These are mineral wool. Yeah. These are mineral wool panels that are just basically put inside a wood frame. And what these do is it controls the echo inside the home theater. And you can learn more about echo in my uh, video about home theater acoustics. Now along this wall here, I have uh, not only curtains, but I also have black blinds. And these help to control the light inside the home theater during the day. Now this wall over here is an east-facing wall, and so fortunately in the evening, the sun's over there. And so I don't really have much issues with this, and I mean, who watches a movie in the morning anyway? We're sleeping in the morning, right? Now along the corners of the ceiling and wall here, of course, I have these uh, this crown molding, which my first attempt ever at doing crown molding, so it didn't turn out nearly as well as it could. I mean, there's some garbage right there. But basically that is what I'm using to hide my cables for my speakers. You can see on the sides there, maybe I don't know if this is zoomed out enough, but I'm using it to run uh, cables down to my speakers on my side walls and on the back, and also it's going to my speakers behind the screen. Now talking about the room itself, uh, this is a room that I pretty much purpose built to be a home theater. Now there are some compromises here, it's not the perfect home theater room, but it's pretty good. Like for example, the uh, you saw in, in the back, it's an open doorway, there's not an actually closed door. I would like to put a door there, but this is not my forever home, we may be moving pretty soon in another year or so, so I can't really put a door back there like I'd really like to in order to get better base. Uh, the walls of the theater are painted a uh, deep navy blue. Ideally, the walls would be black, and some people do completely black out their theater in order to get the best contrast possible. 
I didn't do that. I just went with a nice uh, dark blue wall. Now the ceiling is painted a flat black in order to minimize reflections off the ceiling, which is also going to spoil contrast. All right, now that I have all the extra lighting turned off, I'm going to talk to you about this light switch a little bit. This is a Lutron light switch. I believe I got it from Home Depot. But basically what it is, it's a light switch that came with a remote control and it's programmable on how long you can have it dim. So if I press the button, basically what's gonna happen is these can lights are going to dim over the course of about 10 seconds, which is just going to leave a nice dark room. I'm scared. Now another thing I will show you is that these front two lights are a little bit of a different brand. They take a little bit more voltage in order to uh, come on all the way. So what that's nice for is these back lights can provide just a little bit of light. Maybe you want to eat something. It's a bad habit, but we like to eat something while we watch things. So we can still see to eat stuff, but the front lights are completely off so it doesn't wash out the picture. Now I'll tell you a little bit about these sofas. These sofas that uh, we have are uh, suede leather sofas. I got suede because uh, maybe it would reflect sound a little bit less than uh, the solid leather type stuff, I don't know. But uh, also a little easier to clean than uh, fabric might be. But these sofas we got while I was stationed in Germany. We went to Belgium to get them because it was cheaper to do that than it was to buy it locally for some strange reason. And uh, since these uh, sofas came from Belgium, they were made, of course, in Italy. Yeah, go figure. Now, that's not to say that, uh, oh, these are luxury sofas because they're Italian. But no, you have to think, when you're in Europe and you're in Belgium and you buy something that's Italian, it's like going to Chicago and buying something from Tennessee. I mean, it's really not that big a deal. It's kind of like when you're in Europe and you go to the liquor store and you find a bottle of Jack Daniels, it's expensive. Not because Jack Daniels is a nice whiskey, but because it's imported from Tennessee, United States. So in the same way, yes, we got this sofa in Belgium. It's an Italian sofa, but it's not a luxury sofa. It's just a mid-range sofa. It's not garbage. It's not luxury. It's somewhere in the middle. And it is very comfortable. It's a nice sofa. It's lasted one move so far. And you've enjoyed it. It has a nice high back, so you can just kind of relax while you're watching a movie. Only thing is, I'm not sure if it really affects uh, the two back surround channels. But anyhow, you will notice that the sofa back here is elevated. And it's elevated because it is sitting on this riser here. This is a, I don't have an exact measurement. It looks like about a nine inch rise here. Uh, pretty solid foundation here. Uh, I got it all bolted and glued together so that it doesn't move, doesn't squeak or anything like that. It's actually quite sturdy. Underneath the riser, I can make heap of all sorts of wonderful stuff like extra conduit, joysticks, extra cable. Every audio video junkie needs one of these. Just a bag full of cables. What else do I got under here? All sorts of wonderful stuff. Let's see here. I got, hey look, N64 and, oh, I do have a GameCube controller. Ah, oh, nice. I didn't know I had that. Mario 64. And under here I also have a whole bunch of these things. <clears throat> Totes filled with movies. Now my Blu-rays are uh, actually stored behind the screen, but uh, what this is here, I basically have I think four totes worth of DVDs. Uh, all the videos that I have on my home theater PC that I've copied onto the hard drive, I do actually have a physical backup to all those. So these are all things that I've bought. Now here I have the brains of the home theater, my AV rack with all the wonderful gear in it. So starting from the bottom here, providing power, I have this CyberPower 1350 PFC LCD. This is a... Basically a battery backup, power conditioner, all sorts of wonderful stuff. I have a video review on this one. You should check that out. But basically the nice thing about this one is this UPS actually does output a pure sine wave when the uh, 
when it is on battery backup, unlike some cheaper ups. I've actually tested this. This will power my entire home theater in the event of a power loss. Now, of course, it's not going to do it for a long period of time, but long enough for me to be able to shut off the projector and everything like that. In fact, anecdotally, we were watching a movie one time, we heard like this crack of thunder, and this thing started beeping. We didn't even realize that the power had gone out until we looked through the rest of the house and like, oh, the, the power went out. So this thing actually works very well. Now this, I did have a home theater PC, and now I have this. This is my custom gaming PC. Real quick rundown of the specs. The boot drive is a 512 gigabyte Samsung AHCI SSD. Now I say AHCI. The newer ones are NVMe, for those of you who know what this means, but basically it's a, M .2, it's a fast solid state drive. Now I also have three hard drives in here to that I have uh, movies on. I did have a fourth one, but... Uh, when I added that one to this one, I didn't realize that uh, different power supply manufacturers uh, have different pinouts for the uh, power cables for the modular power supply. So I ended up accidentally frying one of the hard drives. That sucked because that's two gigs of movies so I have to recopy. It's got an i7 4700K processor, I think. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. And it's got a GeForce uh, 970 graphics, you know, nothing too super high-end uh, by today's standards, but uh, it does pretty well for uh, what I'm doing with it. Now moving up, my AV receiver is an Onkyo TXNR809. This is a 7.1 channel receiver, and this also has pre-outs on the back if I want to use that. This is not a Dolby Atmos receiver, and it is not 4K capable. This one is uh, probably, again, at least... Uh, four to six years old. It's served me very well though. I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever other than it's uh, getting a little bit obsolete because I can't do Dolby Atmos and I can't do 4K yet. So when I get a new theater, so when I get a new projector, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and upgrade this if I want to do pass-through and uh, if I want to add some uh, Atmos speakers to my home theater. Don't have any yet, but definitely like to do that, but uh, we'll see if we're still in the house when the time comes. Above that, I have my iNuke NU3000 DSP amplifier. This is a Class D amplifier, but I use this to power my subwoofers. Now, the nice thing about this amplifier, it has this USB connection, and that is because this has full parametric EQ along with a whole bunch of other bells and whistles, so it's really great for being able to really tweak your bass settings, get everything just right, just the way you want it. It actually has it's got some really powerful processing in it, considering how relatively inexpensive it is compared to other home theater audio grade type amplifiers. Now above that, I have a PS3. The only reason I have a PS3 is because at the time I got it, it was the cheapest Blu-ray player available. I don't remember when the PS3 came out. I'll probably put it up on the screen here. Yep, that's when it came out. And I got the PS3 at the time, $600-ish. This is, yeah, actually an original 20 gig PS3. It has all the backwards compatibility with PlayStation 1 and 2 and all that kind of wonderful stuff. I actually only have one PlayStation 3 game. I think it's Fallout 3. Yep, and I also have some Final Fantasy games from uh, the PlayStation 2 that I've played on this. Uh, but that's all I have for uh, games for the PlayStation. I mainly used it as a Blu-ray player. And I still do use it as a Blu-ray player whenever we want to go to Redbox and get a movie and just uh, play it on here. All right, what else do I have? Uh, back here, there's a uh, Nintendo Wii back there. And I have a Nintendo Switch up here. And I also have the old lamp for my projector. This is a lamp I already swapped out. Old lamp, but I have this in case something happens to my current lamp. If it burns out, I still have this that I can put back into the projector and get up and running while I uh, go buy another bulb. And finally up top here I have the old TV that I uh, had before I got my OLED television. I just have this up here in case I want to do something on my home theater but I don't want to use lamp time on my projector. I'll just turn on the TV, do whatever I need to do real quick and then uh, turn it off. Basically it's kind of like a, a maintenance screen. I wish they, I, that I had a smaller one but I, I was too cheap to actually go out and buy a small monitor just for this purpose. So. I'm using an old TV. And to control the home theater PC, my wife actually got me this for, I don't know, for a birthday, Christmas, uh, several years ago. But a nice uh, 
wireless keyboard that I can use to navigate on the home theater PC and uh, get around to where I want to go. So speaking of which, I should probably turn that on and uh, we'll show you some uh, projector stuff because you can certainly tell the quality of a projector through uh, a camera used to record a YouTube video, right? Yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn on the projector and turn off the lights. So of course, first thing you're going to see here is my wonderful desktop with all its uh, cluttered up icons here. It takes lamp-based projectors a little bit of time to warm up. But there we go. And we are in uh, 16 by 9 mode right now, so I'll go ahead and uh, close these down. Oh, and these masking panels, they are made with uh, black velvet. I don't remember where I got the black velvet from, but any black velvet will do. The screen uh, frame is also done with uh, black velvet, just to make sure that it's uh, nice and dark. And for my movie front, I am using uh, the Kodi setup here. So go to my movies, and there we are, here's all the, now I just have the Blu-ray movies on here before because all my standard definition movies are on the hard drive that I fried by not paying attention to different pinouts on different manufacturers power supplies. And bringing up movies just as simple as clicking on it and it starts right up and this is one of the reasons that I do copy movies onto a hard drive. I don't have to go watch previews and all that kind of stuff that I really don't care about watching. I can just get straight to the movie. So let's go ahead and bring the lights back up. And there we have, with the lights all the way on, of course, the uh, image completely washes out. And I'll show you another nifty thing I have. Uh, I do have my gaming PC hooked up in my home theater, which means I like to play games. And, of course, I'm sitting on a sofa, and I don't want to use uh, this little thing to uh, play games with because, well, that's just hard and annoying. And so I built myself this thing, which I also have a video on. This is my home theater gaming table. Now I play Star Citizen, so I got joysticks on here so I can do that. I also have a nice uh, Razer keyboard, a uh, Logitech G600 mouse, and I also have my uh, webcam and an IR lamp on here to do uh, webcam type stuff. So this works out really well, and it's also really nice because it's really simple and easy to clean up once I'm done gaming. Just got to unplug it, which I didn't plug it in in the first place, and just put it right back here and bang my mouse around, and hopefully nothing breaks. There we go. All right, so now we're going to go behind the screen. Now, what do you think it looks like back there? Aha, uh -huh, yep, I did not clean up. This is what happens when you get an acoustically transparent screen. Not only do your speakers go back here, but you also tend to find it very handy for miscellaneous storage. So yep, in addition to my big speakers, I also have a big pile of junk back here. I mean, I got speaker cables, I got, it looks like some ethernet cables, and a, a Nintendo 64 back there, and just all sorts of, there's a sleeping bag, there's some blankets, all sorts of wonderful stuff that just collects behind an acoustically transparent screen because, hey, it's a great place to put stuff. Oh, and there's also some acoustic treatments back there. And this thing is a culprit behind my screen, uh, getting a little bit dingy. This is the intake for my HVAC system, it happens to be behind the screen. That's why I don't have the black spandex going all the way up the sides of the screen, because I had that before, and what happens is the HVAC system just sucks air actually through the screen, and the screen acts as a huge filter. Now the problem with that is there is a brace right here and there is a brace right here. And so when you're watching a movie, there is actually a clean spot where these two braces are and the rest of the picture is a little bit dingy. Now there are some imperfections in the screen. There's something that happened right here. I'm not sure, I think something got on the screen there. There's a little bit of dirt right here. 
But you see, the great thing about this material is the spandex material, it's fairly cheap. It costs about $30 for uh, this amount of material. So if I want to change my screen out, I can do that for about $30 worth of materials. Now, would I like to have a Stuart Film Screen Micro Perf with a gain of 1.3? Of course I would, but I have young kids, and young kids aren't very nice to screens. I mean, I'm sure this is probably something from them, and this is something from them too, so I mean, if I had a $3,000 theater screen, and I have little kids, well then, whenever some little thing happens to the screen, the seat like, ah, it's ruined, and I gotta live with that, and because I'll have to spend $3,000 for a new screen, but with a spandex screen, it's not very painful to go ahead and replace that. Now, in the future, will I get a better screen once the kids are older and they can respect it? Uh, maybe. I'm pretty happy with the uh, spandex screen, but we'll see what it looks like once I pair it with uh, the new projector I'll be getting in probably about a year or so here. But yeah, spandex actually works fairly well, and I'm sure if I did get a sample of screen material, I'd be like, oh wow, that's a, that's a whole lot better. It looks like a direct view television now, but uh, I guess in my case, ignorance is bliss right now because there's no way I'm going to spend a couple grand on a screen that's possibly going to get ruined by kids or a dog or something like that. So there it is. There's my home theater tour. Now for uh, a lot of these things, I have videos specifically about these. Like I have a video about screens. I have a video about acoustic treatments. I have a video about projectors. I have a video about speakers. I believe I have a video about uh, amplifiers, I think, maybe. I have a video reviewing the uninterruptible power supply. I have some build and tuning videos for my subwoofers. I have a build video for my gaming table. So go ahead and check out all that wonderful stuff and here, let me move over here. No, let, let me move over here so that I can put videos up here that you can, uh, that YouTube will recommend that you watch that are also from my channel. And so I hope that this was enjoyable for you. Uh, please go down there and there's like a, this bell icon thing. There's a like button. There's like subscriptions and all that kind of wonderful stuff. So uh, if you like this, please go ahead and uh, check out some of my other content. And uh, thanks for watching.